2011 South African National Rally Championship got underway with its traditional opening round at Total 2 Natal along the south coast of KwaZulu Natal, Rally HQ in Commons and Total. Drawing the most attention was the expected battle between the factory BP Ultimate Volkswagen Polos, the Wurfs Castrol Toyota Auruses, and a plethora of privately entered Ford Fiestas and a pair of Peugeot 207s built to WRC specification. Surprisingly, the first day was not dominated by any of the factory entries, as privateers Mark Cronier, a former Toyota works driver, and Robin Houghton took the early lead in a sassel back Fiesta and slowly built it up after winning all five of the first day's stages. Behind them, BP Volkswagen teammates Hafen Fekken, Pierre Aris and Enzo Kuhn, Guy Hodgson had a ding-dong battle for second place, chased by Zimbabwean Conrad Rothenbach and his new French co-driver Nicolas Klinger in their G-Fuel Ford Fiesta. The two Castrol Toyota Auruses of Johnny Gemmel, Drew Sturrock and Leroy Polter, Elvin Kutsia, hovered just inside the top ten as the team considered the event more as a shakedown run, while neither of the two brand new Perte 207s made it into stage two. Day two began with an onslaught from Rotenbach, who won the first two stages and moved into second behind Cronier. Rotenbach took the lead from Cronier in stage 10, but in the following stage, disaster struck Cronier when a broken wheel cost him 12 minutes at retirement. This brought BP Volkswagen's Jan Habich with Robert Paisley in the hot seat to within striking distance, and with two stages to go, the gap between the two cars was a mere three-tenths of a second. On the final gravel stage of the total two in Natal, however, a slight misfire in the polo put all chances of a final stage showdown to rest, and Rotenbach could cruise to an 8.2 second victory. Behind the battle for the lead, impressive performances came from J.P. Danzo and Carolyn Swan in their older team total Toyota Runex, who finished fifth, and Nicholas Ryan and Jeff Tyra in their NAD Polo, who were sixth. 2009 Dakar winner and rally debutant Janelle de Villiers, along with Ralph Pitchford, placed the fourth BP Volkswagen Polo eighth. The scene is set for a fascinating season ahead. Rotenbach has put down a marker, and the factory teams have a new man to watch. South African Rally Championships Round 1 Total Tour Natal. In this edition, we're going to be taking a look at the Junior Championships, which consist of the Super 1600 and the Super 1400. Let's go take a look at the drivers and see who is going for the number one spot. The South African National Junior Rally Championship has been established for this season and will be fought out between the runners in A7, in the new class S1600 in place of A6, and S1400, which replaces A5. A7, N4, and N3 will be phased out this year, although many familiar faces remain. Gigs, reigning champion, downgrade for the next rally, but you've got a lot of work to do with those youngsters. Yeah, look, I mean, I'm really happy that uh, the formation of the, of the rally series has been consolidated in such a way that you've got a bigger group, especially in the Super 1600 class, and I think that's an ideal position that Volkswagen have put me in, uh, and my duties are to go and win the Super 16 class, you know, and hopefully someday it might actually upgrade to a proper car, or should I say an S2000 rather. Karting champ gone rallying, what's happened here, Ian? Yeah, well, we know we're in the karting with Leroy Poulter and Neil Curtis, and obviously Leroy being in the S2000, trying to follow in his footsteps. So it's good, you know, I like the rally. It's really fun, it's exciting, it's challenging. It's good. Very different though. You've got no one to rival you on the track. It's you, the time, and your navigator. Yes, it's totally, totally different from anything I've ever done, you know, completely different karting, racing. I mean, karting is just you in the car, don't you listen to anyone. Yeah, you got... This oak talking to you the whole time throughout the stage. It's, you know, it's a whole different ball game. So first off, the traditional starting ramp, the A7 BP4 Garden Diva of Lucas Zulu and Carl Peskin, followed by Rocky Reinecke and Christa Ackermann in their A7 Volkswagen Polo. Lots of interest at the starting ramp. There's Craig Trott and Robbie Katia in the S1600 team total Toyota Runex taking the start, followed by Ashley Haig, Smith and Hilton, all frame and Castrol Ford Fiesta. There's Stephanie Hill along with Angela Shields in their team total Toyota Runex. And we're all set for the action. The first two stages towards the west of Umzinto in the sugarcane fields there. Some forest areas, some high speed and some very tight corners. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this and of course uh, we'll watch out for some reigning champions including this man, Gugu Zulu. All thumbs up for now. A good start to their rally for uh, Gugu Zulu and Carl Peskin. Of course, they only have one other competitor in A7, and this will be the first and last event that they will travel in this car. Well, they will be at a Super 16 as from the Sassel Rally, so uh, we're looking forward to that as well. So, Zulu putting down a great marker as well, after stage uh, one, seven, one, five, point six. So everybody else has to go quicker, or thereabouts. Will Rocky Reinecke and uh, Christa Ackermann be able to do it in their A7 Volkswagen Polo? I doubt it, at the end of this stage, 
They were actually 33 seconds slower than the Zulu and Carl Peskin. Already there's an indication though, isn't it, Hendrik, that uh, Zulu is certainly on the pace right now and uh, is showing no fear. First of the 1600 cars, it's Charles Corradi and Kez Naidu in the Silverton Engineering Toyota Auris. And uh, they will be setting the benchmark time in S1600. How close will they be to Zulu? Well, very close indeed. They set down a marker after stage one, 722.6. So, Chad Conradi, Kez Naidu in the mix already. The uh, total evolution car at the moment, Craig Trott, Robbie Kutz here uh, in the Run X, really good. Also, uh, a former multiple A6 champion as well. Yep, and they went uh, slower by 2.6 seconds behind Chad Conradi. And uh, at the end of the second stage, that gap grew a little bit more. Yeah, I know. He really didn't get it all together in the first stage, uh, but uh, was looking for improvement. Well, I guarantee you there'll be plenty in the stages to come. Watch this young man with Ashley A. Smith and Hilton Orfrey in the Castro Fiesta. They uh, are still learning that car. Of course, it's the first event of the season. But this man is very, very promising. Yeah, car 54. I also felt that they got off to a really good start, setting a pretty good, cool time. About fifth fastest, but they could improve on that later on. In the 10 point Four seconds off the pace, Hugo and Shields, the all-ladies team in the Team Total Toyota Runex. And a uh, lot of people interested in the number of the uh, female teams running in South African rally. Well, and why wouldn't they be? Every other woman sitting on the couch watching this <laughs> will be fist-pumping. Come on, girls, go for it. They love to navigate, don't they? So on board with uh, Shields and Hugo. Well, you know, she can pedal. I mean, you can see what she's having to do to steer this car and keep it on the track. It's no easy mug, and of course, these roads are very, very difficult. Well, they seem to be just easing into the rally at this stage, not quite keeping the pace of the leaders. On board with Shields and Hugo again, and the closure of stage number two finds himself 33 seconds down at the moment, still chasing. Megan Villac and Lorraine Duplessis in their S1400 BP Volkswagen Polo, the first of the 1400s, and they will be setting the benchmark in this stage. Another all-ladies team, lots of interest in them. Well, Formula Class A5, it's now called the Super 1400, so this is a really good rally to test their skills on. Indeed. On board we go with them, and oh dear, that's the uh, that's the Peugeot 207 of High Lartaton, so that looks like the end of their rally. Not a good one for them. Guy Bottrell and Simon Vasey Lyle in their S1600 Yato Tools Toyota Runex. Lots of interest in him as well. Of course, he's a, he's a star from circuit racing, and let's see how he goes along with his navigator this year. So, very rough conditions at the moment, as we can see, and uh, the roads are very tight. So, no stranger out of motor racing, as you say, in the Shelby can -Ams. Long career in karting and then in sports car racing, now trying out uh, rallying. Also still getting to know it. Mona Jansa for Rensburg and Rikas Ferri here in their S1600 GC Diesel Vivo. Uh, one of the uh, class favourites, really, for uh, the championship in S1600 this year. He was uh, 25 seconds off the pace. The end of this stage. Christoph and Celeste Snyder's brother and sister pairing in their S1600 Polo. And I think they surprised everybody because they put down some good markers in stage one and they're going along quite nicely. And this is my tip, watch out for this. I think they're going to do well if they can keep the car going. I think that's a very good tip. They were only third fastest in this stage in this class and staying with the leaders. Henk Latigan now along with Pierre Jordan, Henk of course son of mine, and the second of the S1400 cars in the little Vivo and uh, immediately going fastest on the stage in this class. Yeah. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Of course, there's a long way to go here. All right, 62, Clint Weston and Sean Fisher in the Toyota Runex, also in the mix and uh, hoping to do well. They've got a long way to go there. Clint Weston also trying his hand at rallying this season. Now, in the older car, the A1600 Toyota Corolla of Paul Hendrik Franken and Uwe Pei. About 50 seconds off the pace at the end of this stage. And here's Ian Young, the young karting star, along with Hermann Grunroth in the S1400 Toyota Yaris. The overall standings after stage two, uh, with Zulu leading Conradi by just under nine seconds. So after two stages, the first chance of servicing, and this is in the service park at the Scopera Country Club. Chart, leading your class, how's it going out there? No, it's very early days, so leading it doesn't mean anything. Um, we're still set, set, trying to settle down, and just take it easy and trying to keep it simple. It's a new navigator, a rebuilt car, so I just need to get my rhythm back and then we can take it from there. Stephanie Angela, one of the all-girl teams, how's your rally going? Awesome, awesome. We had a bit of a misfire in the car. Um, so our times are not that good, but we're getting on very well and the roads are awesome. We're having so much fun. 
Angela, this is your first national stage rally. How's it, how are you enjoying it? Um, it's, it's very fun. Um, it was a bit scary in the beginning when we did the shakedown and I thought, oh, here we go. But after the first, halfway through the first stage, I was into it and now I'm fine. Now it's like second nature. <laughs> Stages three and four now, and as you can see, it's a repeat of stages one and two of the morning, so more of the same. So Zulu and Pescodens continue where they left off, putting the market down. Oh, look at that car, looks like a carnival on wheels on the way to <laughs> Drum Durak. Uh, watch out for Invernetti, he's been holding up a few of the cars out there. Rocky Reinecke in his polo, second in class A7 at the moment, 10th overall. Trailing Kuguzu uh, by 11, 1 minute and 12 seconds. In fact, he's going very slowly, so I don't think he's going to see the end of the stage. If he does, well, indeed, he's already lost 2 minutes to Kuguzu. Uh, Charles Moradi in his Auras, second overall currently, trailing Zulu by 8.9 seconds, but leading class is 1600 by 11 seconds. He is fine. No doubt about that. Uh, what will he uh, put in at the end of the stage? Let's have a look at the total evolution car. Trot could see her in that run X and they're still in the mix as well and uh, looking pretty cool at this stage of the game. Hague Smith in his Fiesta. He's currently fourth in A1600, starting to find his feet. Lovely car control there. And here are the two ladies. You go and shields. Yeah, they got a really big wake up after the uh, first stage and, uh, but they've got themselves together and they're looking pretty cool. Taking it easy, mind you. As I said, after the first two stages, Steve's still on a steep learning curve and I'm sure they will be better as the season progresses. Here's Megan Vallark and Lorraine Duplessis in their Vivo, the MP Ultimate Vivo. Second in the S1400, but almost one and a half minutes off the pace. On board with them right at the moment, so we can see how tight these roads are. Really tight, twisty bits. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be out there myself, to be honest with you. And of course, also a new pairing this season. Here's Ian Young in his Yaris, third in S1400, about 5.2 seconds behind Vallark. As we go to go bottle now, the run -ex. 26 and a, point, a bit behind class leader Conradi at this point, that uh, difference will stretch. Warner Janssen von Rensburg in the Vivo, followed by Christoph and Celeste Snaders in the Polo, third in S1600 after four stages. Very well done. Unfortunately for Ladakhan and Jordan, the leaders in the S14 are retired on this stage. Day one ends with the final dash around the car park at the Albert Crossing Shopping Centre. This is always very, very impressive and very spectacular for the spectators. Yeah, the crowd's certainly into it. So fantastic nighttime action. Right now, Gugu Zulu and Pesky still lead the charge. A big battle of 13 seconds between second to fifth place, and then coming up in sixth position. Solid placing by Garadine Bottle. I think the ladies will be happy in eighth ahead of Clint Weston.